This presentation will demonstrate the location of the muscles of the head and neck. So first of all, we'll look at the frontalis. And the frontalis, as you see, is really making up the forehead here. So it's covering the frontal bone. Its function is to wrinkle the forehead. So when you contract that or like kind of lift your eyebrows, um, it causes the wrinkling of the forehead. Nasalis. Well, the nasal bone was right here at the nose or the nasal area. So this muscle kind of covering the nose area is the nasalis. Now the orbicularis oculi and orbicularis oris. Um, orbicularis means going around in a circle. Oculi is for the eye. Oris is for the mouth. So the orbicularis oculi, when you uh, contract that, it closes the eye. If you contract the orbicularis oris, you compress the lips, or you purse the lips like you're going to kiss someone. Another is the corrugator supercilli. So superior meaning superior to uh, the eyes or the eyelashes, which are the uh, the cilli, kind of means um, um, hairs. So this is also going to wrinkle the brow, like if you're going if you're um, frowning. Um, and corrugator means to kind of wrinkle. If you think of corrugated cardboard, uh, it's kind of a wrinkled appearance. Then we have the zygomaticus major. We actually have two muscles here. We have the zygomaticus major and zygomaticus minor. Major is a little larger, uh, but we don't have to know the minor. And when this contracts and gets smaller towards the zygomatic bone or the cheekbone, it pulls up the corners of the mouth so um, it's, it helps make you smile. If we turn the head to the side a little bit, we see the temporalis muscle covering the temporal bone. And it's going to attach, it kind of goes behind the zygomatic arch, and it goes and attaches to the mandible. So when the temporalis muscle contracts, it elevates the mandible. The occipitalis, we can see a little bit of it right here, covering the occipital bone, so here in the back, covering the back of the head. The masseter muscle goes from your zygomatic arch down to the mandible. This also elevates the mandible. Masseter is one of the muscles of mastication, which is chewing. So when you think about the fact of opening and closing your mouth to chew, you're using your masseter muscle. The last one here in this picture is the buccinator. And so that is this muscle going kind of from the corner of the mouth back toward the jaw. Um, and that word buccinator actually means trumpeter, so it's going to compress the cheeks. And if you think about playing a trumpet, um, if you do it poorly, your cheeks kind of puff out like a chipmunk. But when it's done correctly, this buccinator muscle compresses the cheeks and forces the air out through the mouth when you would play a trumpet. Now this slide shows what are called the extrinsic eye muscles, and these are the muscles that are responsible for moving the eye up, down, right, left, um, and kind of rolling your eyes, so to speak. And we have superior rectus, inferior rectus, lateral rectus, medial rectus, and superior and inferior oblique. If you remember that the word rectus means straight, and oblique means at an angle. So on the top of the eye, the superior rectus that goes straight back would be the superior rectus. The muscle under the eye that goes straight back would be the inferior rectus. This is on the medial side, going straight back behind the eyes would be the medial rectus. Lateral side, going straight back would be lateral rectus. Here on the top of the eye, oblique means at an angle. So this muscle that kind of goes, here we see the tendon and then the muscle kind of going around. There's a, uh, something called a trochlea or a little um, pulley right here. The uh, tendon goes through that pulley and then around to the back. So this is the superior oblique. And then underneath the eye, kind of like a little sling, is the inferior oblique. Now in this picture, it tells us medial rectus, lateral rectus. Uh, but one way to tell the difference uh, in a picture like this is that the oblique muscles are going toward the medial side. So if those labels weren't there, how would you know which side was medial? This little trochlea here is actually attaching at the frontal bone near the nasal, um, uh, right behind the nasal cavity. And so this is the medial side. 
and then the lateral side would be over here. Coming back to the outside of the, the body surface, we have another muscle called the platysma. And this muscle here is a very broad, flat muscle. It covers the entire anterior surface of the neck. And if we wanted to see any of the muscles underneath that, we would have to remove the platysma. So in most pictures, most models, charts, you will see this muscle removed. Um, and then we have the sternocleidomastoid, or short for, or SCM for short. And this is an, one of those muscles that's named for its attachments. Sterno, referring to the sternum. Clido, referring to the clavicle. And then these two kind of join, and they are going to attach to the mastoid process right behind the ear. And so when this contracts, it causes flexion. Uh, this part, the mastoid process, will come down closer to the sternum. So it's kind of a lateral uh, and forward flexion motion. And this is the beginning of the sternocleidomastoid on the other side. Um, and on you, you would actually be able to feel this on yourself. That V that's at the base of your throat um, is made by these sternocleidomastoid muscles. Uh, here we have two groups of muscles. We have the suprahyoid muscles, and then we have what are called the infrahyoid muscles. Supra is referring to the fact that it is superior to the hyoid bone. And remember, the hyoid is that unique bone that doesn't articulate with any other bone directly. And so the muscles of this group include the digastric muscle, which kind of comes through a little loop right there, the myelohyoid, uh, this is one that kind of makes up the floor of the uh, of the chin. Then we have the stylohyoid that tells me it's going to attach to the styloid process of the temporal bone, and then the hyoid, and then the geniohyoid is here again, kind of helping to make up the floor of the mouth or of the of the jawline. So these are all considered suprahyoid muscles. The infrahyoid muscle, same picture, here is the hyoid bone. So everything underneath that is going to be your infrahyoid muscles. And this includes the omohyoid, which is kind of a, kind of a backwards L shape on this side, uh, omohyoid. Sternohyoid, so here's the sternum. And so the sternohyoid is going to go all the way up to the hyoid bone. Sternothyroid, this is the thyroid cartilage right here, and so it's going to go from the sternum up to the thyroid cartilage. And then we have the thyrohyoid, so it's going to go from the um, thyroid cartilage up to the hyoid bone, so that's this small portion right here. Uh, on the practical, I will not ask you a specific muscle, I will ask you which group does it belong to. And as a lecture question, um, a good thing to do is just be able to pick out which goes in which group. So, for example, which of the following is not an infrahyoid muscle, or which of the following is a suprahyoid muscle, or something like that. The scalenes. Uh, the scalenes there are three, uh, posterior, middle, and anterior. Their function is to elevate the ribs and flex the neck. So if you kind of shrug your shoulders, um, that involves a little bit of, um, of the scalenes. But when you breathe, the ribs have to, have to come up. And so the, uh, the scalenes are involved here. And also in flexion or lateral flexion specifically of the neck. And so what I do is I look for this triangle. Here's the platysma that's cut. Here is my sternocleidomastoid. Here is the trapezius. We haven't talked about that muscle yet. But then these three muscles that are made in that triangle are the posterior, middle, and anterior scalenes.